Jones' uh, optimism. I think in the, this is the number three Rice Congress. So in the 23rd Rice Congress, 20 years from now, we'll say that Africa is the leading exporter of rice in the world. Okay. And I think what will happen is that um, the question is not <coughs> about whether they'll meet their amount that they're importing. <coughs> the question will be about dualism. And this is a point that Aliou was bringing up. The, to what extent will small farmers in Africa participate in the rice revolution in Africa and the export of rice? <coughs> I think Randy's point is central. That um, what I see, I listen to Indian exporters uh, that are setting up big operations, Saudi exporters, there's Nigerians that are putting massive money into essentially rice plantations. <coughs> there's going to be a lot of movement in that. It's the water, not the land. Because, and the water is what's missing, and the water will be there in Africa to take. There will be adaptation of that. The milling capacity will come in, but the milling capacity will come in with major Indian operations that will have excess capacity for the first few years, and sell that capacity to local rice operations, medium rice operations. Okay, so you'll get a leapfrogging that will occur, that won't be the taton moment, won't be the small steps of getting irrigation right here and adapting a little variety there and bringing in the smallholders. I think the real challenge is not meeting the production amount. You're going to be the biggest exporter of rice in the world in 20 years. The question is bringing all those smallholders along at all in this process and figuring out how to do that in a way that's fast enough. You said the most important thing this morning. I started my career basically working on rice demand in West Africa. And urbanization was driving it ahead because this, the coarse grains were not being milled. Uh, it was expensive to mill the coarse grains, so rice was taking over. That's the reason. It isn't because the rice is traditional. Maize is not traditional. Sorghum is traditional. Millet is sort of traditional. But the, the milling technology of those was antiquated and small, so they bring it easy to prepare rice, and it takes over like wildfire within urbanized settings. And um, the same thing, you have all the small mills in many villages, extremely efficient and, and effective, and so the imports easily went over. What will happen is not that Asian rice is going to be, come in and beat African rice. There will be export enclaves in Nigeria that will flood Africa with rice, exporting. There will be export enclaves in various places, in Ethiopia, in Nigeria, that will flood Africa with African rice, and then turn the guns on elsewhere. It will be just like we talked about with India. We said in 1960s in India, you said, poor India, I mean, if they can tie their shoelaces, we will give them a, a standing ovation. <laughs> Fifty years later, they're exporting, taking over everything, right, extremely rich. All of these areas that were thought to be low potential, low productivity, low everything, are now the second <laughs> degree revolution diversifying. The Punjabis are taking over everything in the world. I think that's going to be the story. That's so far optimistic beyond anybody's statement that hopefully, if it's caught on film 20 years from now, you can show it and say, God, there's this weird guy who didn't know anything about rice. And yet he said, rice will be the number one, uh, Africa will be the number one export. What do you think about that? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll take a few more. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, my name is Sayyid, is the one I'm from Bangladesh, and I want to be the board of trustees. I want to congratulate the uh, presenters. Uh, never in presentation of the arrangement that are being made for CARD. Uh, but but uh, full apologies I want to mention that to me the CARD structure appeared to be highly bureaucratic, multi layer uh, with uh, committees, secretariat, steering groups, stakeholders in now 21 different countries. Uh, as far as I uh, recall, uh, as I know, there will be a presentation on the GRISP tomorrow. And it is saying in the GRISP, uh, by, uh, prepared by Iriad, the new CBS uh, first mega program, that Africa Rice will be looking after 
rise development in Africa. I wanted to understand what was the relationship between card and Africa rise. Because you never mentioned uh, on that uh, mentioned about that particular point. And it's important because as Professor Peter Tiba said that Africa has been a steady uh, increasing imports from the international market over the past 40 years and as far as I know at the moment 40% of the rise that is put in the international market is imported by Africa. But what is uh, no, not clear is what arrangements are being made on the ground on two sides. One is the research and development and training, uh, then uh, the dissemination of the knowledge and its impact on the ground. But before that, what arrangements and resources are being made for supplying the inputs, seeds, irrigation, fertilizer, and resource management, and the matching resources coming from. Uh, this uh, needs to be uh, made a little more clear. And obviously, what was said in the presentation, the next steps, identification of interventions based on needs, resources, matching resources. I think that is uh, the most important part. Uh, because uh, card is a big challenge. And uh, uh, if we, uh, if, uh, pardon me mentioning this, in South Asia, we have a more or less uniform administrative structure, uh, mainly because we had the common master, the British, as a colonial master, so we had a uniform system. But in Africa and in West Africa, there were at least three foreign masters, uh, the Portuguese, the French, and the British, and different administrative systems within the countries. And as far as I know, the narrow systems are uh, different in different countries. The, the, the topologies are different. Uh, the administrative structures are different. So what is important, ultimately, would be the national uh, rise development strategies, national agricultural development strategy. And in that context, the idea of South-South cooperation, where the farmers from Asian countries that they to go and collaborate uh, with the African farmers would be, I think, very, very important. Thank you. I'll take the one, the last one. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I'm uh, from uh, the Vietnamese uh, Academy of uh, Agriculture and Science. Actually, uh, our academy received a lot of uh, invitations from Africa, different countries, to send uh, rice, technical expertise. Uh, actually, we have some big project with uh, Sudan, with uh, Mauritania, with uh, Mozambique, etc. In the past, with, uh, the trilateral and now we start with the bilateral Vietnam and and mostly the fin finance man I think coming from some, some uh, African bank. Uh, my question is uh, this is a big project. My question is uh, what type of uh, production form you prefer? You should uh, uh, support small farmer. I mean because now we can see that. Uh, Yes, it's a big project that the private enterprise uh, uh, invests in the large scale and then in its fair way. But you see, it's also another opportunity. And I heard about land grabbing in Africa uh, and a movement of uh, a Chinese uh, NGO, uh, sorry, uh, African NGO, uh, did test uh, some, some Chinese uh, land grabbing in Africa. I don't know what this kind of phenomenon uh, also in the rice production or not. Thank you. So uh, let me ask uh, answer some of the questions and then I think Okay, thank you very much uh, for the uh, everybody who raised a uh, very interesting and uh, tough question to me. Uh, maybe my, my answer is scattering around everywhere. But let me try to answer one by one. Okay, uh, firstly, um, okay, uh, uh, about the, uh, the first question, about the, uh, the, what about Africa in terms of producing rice? Um, we believe, uh, based on the analysis of the potential for expansion, 
what is quite untapped in uh, especially West Africa is what is called inland Paris swamp. It was not used because of various reasons, but uh, these are areas that are quite unexploited and which is quite suitable for us. So what I, I could not believe in Ghana or Sierra Leone or, uh, or Liberia is that uh, lots of valleys, <coughs> lots of water, swamp, but it is not used because, mainly because, many people say it's because of the diseases, but uh, now they are, are starting to use, it, use such land and that is quite suitable for rice and uh, we are very optimistic but by exploiting these land which is quite vast we will be able to do something. Land grab, I agree, land grab issues is what I quite agree and uh, what I uh, know about it is that uh, now at least in Sierra Leone, Ghana and Gambia I remember, uh, the ministries of agriculture uh, with the cabinet are really trying hard to change the uh, laws and start doing some efforts. So let us believe that there is something happening in the near future. Infrastructure, yes, um, in many countries, yes, we have to build infrastructure, but there are some countries like Mo South Mozambique or uh, Central Madagascar, you already have some existing uh, infrastructure, but it should be rehabilitated. So we have to think, uh, see this in such a way. And then uh, about the issue of small scale or large scale, many things are happening happen in Africa. For example, in Ethiopia, uh, an Indian private company is coming to the west part of uh, Ethiopia, the lowland, trying to open up 300,000 hectares for rice production. That's huge. Yeah, Indian and also a Chinese company is coming another 200,000 hectares is going to be developed there. So this kind of large-scale operation is coming up. Another example, I think the other, there's a presentation from Holland this afternoon, so I think I will leave it to them, but uh, there is an out, uh, outgrowers scheme being developed in Nigeria, I think, and I think it is uh, getting a very good result. So small-scale based, large-scale based, various types of production is being tested in Africa, and I think there is no quick fix, so there's no silver bullet to cover all over Africa. There are many uh, lessons learned, uh, uh, success, success experience will be coming, and I think uh, that will be interesting to see. And for the uh, question of uh, Mr. Pingali, yes, uh, China and India is not in card at this moment because we started with the other country because we try to hide that it is Jaika Jaika. But we started with JICA and uh, we, uh, we started with the South South country, which JICA have lots of experience in. This, is, this explains it's Brazil, it's Egypt, it's, uh, it's Thailand, it's Vietnam. But of course, your point is right. And if you think, the, uh, if you think about the, uh, the future of the South South population, definitely this uh, issue must be addressed. And that's, that will be discussed maybe in the very near future. And finally, bureaucracy, sorry, uh, I hate bureaucracy. And uh, we, uh, shortly, because of the, uh, for the sake of the time, the relationship Africa Rice, Africa Rice is part of our, part of our partners, one of the Israeli steering committee members. And the relationship with GRISP is, I was in the GRISP write up shop in Los Banos earlier this year. And I sent a message on behalf of the other development partners, we are committed to bring what is produced by GRISP, by this research, we are prepared to bring to the ground. So we are creating lots of uh, formal, informal connections. So we, are, uh, we, sound, we may sound very bureaucratic, but we try to be as um, informal as possible so that we can create lots of synergies and then uh, we are trying to see some differences in the 10 years in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you.